Throughout his 19-year professional football career, Tony Adams played for only one team, the Arsenal. Arsenal have done it, they've got the goal! Adams! In 14 of those seasons, he was the captain, the longest-serving Arsenal captain ever. It was never a walk in the park for him though, he had to battle through an addiction that almost cost him his career, served a prison sentence in the middle of a season, almost lost his life, you name it, he probably went through it. The fact he was able to stand the test of time is even more impressive when you get to know about his journey. This is a story of how Tony Adams became Mr. Arsenal. Tony Adams was born in Romford, London in 1966. While he was still a 13-year-old schoolboy, he signed for Arsenal's academy. He spent just over three years in the youth setup before being handed his first team debut against Sunderland in November of 1983. He only made two more appearances that season. In fact, he didn't become a first team regular for another three years, featuring 16 times in the 1984-1985 season and just 10 times in the 1985-86 season. In George Graham's first full season as Arsenal manager, he gave Adams a permanent starting berth and what a decision this turned out to be. He played in all 42 league games, scored an incredible 6 goals and helped Arsenal keep 16 clean sheets, conceding just 35 goals, the second best defensive record, only behind the champions Everton in that regard. In all competitions, he made 55 appearances including 9 in the League Cup, a competition the Gunners went on to win, Adams' first major trophy and Arsenal's first piece of silverware since 1979. His impact after becoming part of the starting eleven was immediate and this was recognized at the end of the season. He won Arsenal's Player of the Season award, the PFA Young Player of the Year award as well as being included in the PFA Team of the Year. Everyone knew how good he was. His teammates, the coach, the fans, the media, the opponents, everyone knew. But what they didn't know was his personal life had begun falling apart. They didn't know he had begun drinking a lot and this would slowly develop into an addiction. He played 39 league games the next year, keeping 15 clean sheets. With manager George Graham and captain Kenny Sansom having a couple of disagreements, Adams was named new Arsenal captain in January of 1988. He was only 21, but his on-field leadership trait was clearly noticeable. In the next season, his first full season as Arsenal captain, the Gunners ended their 18-year wait for a league title, winning it dramatically at Anfield on the final day. Adams played in 36 of the 38 league games, scoring 4 times and aiding the team to 14 clean sheets. That doesn't paint the full picture though. Between mid-February and mid-March, Arsenal managed just one win in 6 matches, dropping crucial points against QPR, Coventry, Millwall, Nottingham Forest and Charlton. The media criticized Tony. Throughout the season, he was booed and jeered by opposition fans after a couple of underwhelming performances while playing for England. In a match at Old Trafford in April, Adams scored the opening goal in the 77th minute and just 7 minutes later, he scored again. Only problem was this time it was for Man United, a calamitous own goal. The very next day, he was a target for the media who labeled him a donkey. Opposition fans made fun of him. He struggled to cope with all the negative attention. His only friend? Alcohol. A few more pints at the local pub to take away the stress. As mentioned earlier, despite all of this, he lifted the league trophy at the end of the season at only 22. In the words of George Graham, Tony must have thought this was so easy, lifting big trophies as Arsenal captain at only 22. Surely this would go on. He would have the last laugh. While the media scrutiny continued, Tony was always in the headlines for the wrong reasons. On the night of Arsenal's remarkable win at Liverpool to clinch the title, Tony got even more drunk with friends down the pub, took a cab to Highbury and ended up sleeping on the staircases outside the stadium just a few hours before the title parade. He played all 38 games the next season, helping Arsenal keep 14 clean sheets and boast the second best defensive record in the league. In May of 1990, Arsenal were due to travel to Singapore to take on South Korea as the Asian side prepared for the World Cup, a tournament which Adams himself was hoping he would be part of with England. On the day of travelling, he decided to head down the pub for a few more drinks with friends. As he got drunk, he lost track of time. By the time he remembered the flight, he only had a couple of hours to get there. 
He got in his car, drove as quickly as he could, and well... Adams crashed his Ford Sierra into a brick wall. When police arrived and checked his blood alcohol level, it was four times the legal limit. A court date was booked for him. By this time, he had already missed the coach that drove the team to the airport, and a couple of journalists had received news about the crash and feared the worst, but for some reason, he had put on his seatbelt that day and suffered very minor injuries. One of his friends who had followed him to the station drove him to the airport, arriving just minutes before boarding. He was still visibly drunk, wearing flip-flops and pieces of glass in his hair. The chairman and the manager didn't speak to him. The only words Adam spoke during the tour, oh, by the way, I have a court date in December. With everything going on, he was left out of the England World Cup squad. By this point, the fans and the media were calling for George Graham to strip him off captaincy. Some were suggesting selling him to the lower division teams. George didn't listen to all the backlash. He knew he had one of the best defenders in the world. Adams would turn up at games drunk and still receive the Man of the Match award. Between the start of the 1990-1991 season and December, Arsenal kept 10 clean sheets and remained unbeaten, but Tony now had a court case to attend just before Christmas. The Arsenal captain was sentenced to four months in prison. Manager George Graham's fury was not directed at Adams, but instead at the judge. He believed that Tony was sentenced just because he was a high-profile figure and they took the opportunity to use him as an example and a warning to the public of what would happen to them during the festive period if they drank and got behind the wheel. He ended up serving half of his sentence before being released. Unfortunately, he went right back to his old habits. The performances did not dip though. In fact, he led Arsenal to another first division title. Defensively, only 18 goals were conceded in the 38 matches, a record at the time. Arsenal lost just one match that season. Adams missed the match. Just for the record, Adams was definitely not the only player drinking those days. It was a culture in England and in the football world. According to former England international Terry Butcher, it was win, draw, or lose, you must booze. Basically, you win, you celebrate by having a drink or two. You lose, you drown in your sorrows by having a drink or two. You draw, you analyze the game while having a drink or two. Many players did it including his own teammates. Adams was different though. He would drink while others trained, stay in the pub till morning while others left the night before. He would get involved in fights day in day out, targeted by the media. He was also different in the sense of coming to the pitch and carrying the team to victory. George Graham tried his best to change the culture and would still support his players through the hard times. Adams continued with the usual cycle for the next few years. Drink, play, drink, play. While out with an injury just before the 1996-97 season, Tony headed down the pub as usual. But something was different that day. The glass was right there, but he had had enough. Something kept on telling him, don't do it. This is too much. He got in his car and headed to the training ground. There, he met his teammate, Paul Masson. He uttered the words, Paul, I think I've got a drinking problem. Paul had joined a community-based program that supported people with alcohol addiction and made incredible strides towards being clean. He brought Tony along with him. Six weeks later, Arsene Wenger was appointed Arsenal manager. The culture he brought into the team boosted Adam's recovery even more. Wenger was a father figure, and after speaking to Tony, he understood the journey and the braveness of Adams and was ready to embark on this journey with him. He recovered in the process, led Arsene Wenger's team to two doubles in the 1998 and 2002 season before his retirement after the FA Cup final in 2002. Adams made 672 appearances for Arsenal, the second most in club history. He captained the team to four league titles, three FA Cups, two League Cups and a European Cup Winners' Cup. Individually, he was voted Arsenal's Player of the Season three times and was included in the PFA Team of the Year on four different occasions. He was inducted into the Premier League Hall of Fame in 2023. Oh, by the way, he also has a statue outside the Emirates Stadium. Internationally, he played for England at four major tournaments, 
the euros in 1988, 1996 and 2000 and the World Cup in 1998. He was the last England player to score at the Old Wembley. Adams has one of the most remarkable career stories of any Arsenal player in history. It wasn't always plain sailing, in fact, it was far from that, but he still fought through all the barriers and became an Arsenal great, a Premier League great. Despite going through all the personal problems, he still gave 100% on the pitch, one of the best centre-backs in Premier League history, a leader, a game reader. During his early days, he used his physicality and man-marking ability to keep strikers quiet. After Wenger arrived, he developed into a ball-playing defender, often carrying the ball from the back. He was never blessed with pace, but he used his intelligence, positioning and great tackling ability to cover for that. One thing we can take from Tony's story is this. No matter what you're going through, in life, there's always a way out. Even with obstacles trying to keep you down, you can still conquer. Change comes from within. The moment you acknowledge the struggle which takes courage, that's the first step to your recovery. What do you guys think of Tony Adams and which player would you like to see next?